Welcome to Awakening Heart Network. My name is Toria Valley. Today we have the distinct honor and pleasure of joining in conversation with Janine Tracy. I am so excited because Janine is a vibrational geneticist, and this is such an exciting topic. When we can get into vibration and how sound and frequency we're created from are actually impacting what we are, coming from us, moving all around and circulating. And the the more we're in tune with all of this, the the greater the balance can be in our lives, the, the faster the energetics can heal in our world, the faster they can heal in our bodies. So this is one of my special, special loves. I love talking about light frequency and sound within the body. And I'm just so excited that she's with us here, sound vibrations, to create shifts in the energetic, emotional, and physical elements of the body. Working with multidimensional light beings, she harmonizes the physical DNA to its crystalline counterpart, amplifying its resonance and bringing the body into coherence and alignment with its highest potential. The vibrational genetics modality was developed by Dylene during her work with clients as a body talk practitioner when she began to connect with several multidimensional beings who offered her their help and guidance during healing sessions. One such group is a council of compassionate guides known as the Mantis. The Mantis are an ancient race of beings who are here in support of Earth's and humanity's ascension. They are adept healers and geneticists who bring their wisdom and insight to Earth during this unprecedented time of change and potential for the human population. Dylene's interest in science and DNA began as an early age, and as she later discovered, she was, and as she later discovered, She was encouraged by her mantis guides throughout her life. The mantis emanate deep compassion and create the space for healing and resolution of discordant electromagnetic and emotional energy affecting the physical body through the use of sound. They offer their wisdom of the earth, how the new electromagnetic environment we live in can be understood and adjusted to, and how to incorporate sound into your life for healing and well-being for all of us. Jailene serves as an ambassador to this group but is in no way it's the only connection to the mantis. They emphasize that anyone connect can connect to them with intention and an open heart for healing and guidance. Welcome to the call, Dylene. This is very, very exciting that you're here. Thank you so much for having me, Turia. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, I am so, so excited that you're here, and I kind of want to jump in, and I'm going to let people know Sometimes we get to the call and people are in the energy that they're just listening. We have hands raised, but we just want to make sure that everybody is understanding, you know, that there is a place in all of this, however you feel, make sure you open and allow the energy to flow to you. Make sure that you're just, you know, willing to, because I've been feeling the energy from this call actually building for a few hours, and I was like, oh, wow, I can really feel the energy preceding the call, and I love when that happens. So I'm going to ask some questions. If you all have some questions or you want to make a, a statement, let us know how you're doing. Send information into the webcast. Let us know what you're feeling, and don't be afraid to jump in and ask questions if you'd like. So, Jalene, I have a question for you. What is, just for everyone else, what is vibrational genetics? <laughs> Great question. So vibrational genetics is really the use of sound to shift different elements of the body. It is really the use of sound to shift different elements of the body that have been uh, shifted out of accordance or out of alignment with the harmonious being that you came in your nascent state. So nascent state meaning um, what is the code of DNA that you arrived here on the planet with, with all of its potential and all of its ability to shift in a myriad of different directions. Um, I talk about in my work epigenetics, and epigenetics is basically um, we all have our DNA, our, our set DNA in our body, but how that DNA is expressed or how different Uh, genes are made and and what becomes of them has everything to do with the study of epigenetics, the function of epigenetics. And and that is um, tracking the different different amounts of um, different genes that are made, how they affect your body. Uh, You know, if you've had a good night's sleep, how cohesive are you? 
the next day. It all depends on the way your genes are expressed. So um, that is uh, what vibrational genetics is. And I work with, like you said, these multidimensional beings that help bring in the energy behind the sound. The sounds are channeled from this group. It is uh, Austin, the Mantis. I also work with other uh, multidimensional beings, ascended masters, uh, the Arcturians, the Divinians, different groups depending on what the particular client needs in that time. And um, all of these beings have shown me that we can participate and modify what's happening on the inside of our body um, in a really gentle yet effective way with the use of sound. And that sound is really um, the elixir for that um, first we have the light and the vibration of light into sound, and then that sound vibrates into something more denser, which is physical form. And so it makes sense that sound is able to modify and shift things in different directions because that is basically what we are. All cells vibrate. Uh, all cells, all organs have their own song. They have their own home note. Um, and sound healers know this. And so it... Um, lends itself sound very well to helping us to heal and come back into balance. Well, you know, I'm a singer-songwriter. People, I mean, I, I just let everybody mm-hmm. know. And so the fact that you're working with sound is really has my heart because I believe that the sound that we are, like the cells are making sound. And the sound that right. we are when we are in, you know, yeah, purposely making sound is a huge thing and it can be so loving and kind and yet there's so much kind and yet there's so much sound around us that actually can um do damage you know frequency waves sound waves so i'm loving right. that you're working in this i i, I want to know you know these amazing guides the arcturians the mantis the divinians how did you discover your relationship with your guides this is such a juicy question <laughs> Yeah, so as you said in the intro, it was during this phase in my life where I was practicing body talk, which is a modality that um, looks always at the emotional and spiritual and um, energetic components behind uh, health and disease in the body. Um, And it uses tapping to shift those things. And I was studying this modality after having studied a number of other uh, healing modalities such as Reiki and um, Theta Healing, and I've been practicing those as well. And um, but while I was getting sort of to rush it through, <laughs> and so um, because I was in a meditative state for many hours a day, uh, it was really what I needed to probably stimulate and open up my own brain, my own pineal gland, to uh, connect me into this guidance that had always been around me, but I just hadn't really gotten to the other side of reaching it or allowing it to come in. And it was also because I was in service in a way that is really part of my purpose, which is to bridge the two worlds of science and metaphysics. Um, That's, I realized, a big part of what my purpose is, is to bring about healing, but to do it so in a grounded way through merging of science and metaphysics, because really the two are one and the same, but we've, humanity has strayed from metaphysics thinking it is something ethereal and sort of out there as ethereal and sort of out there as opposed to thinking of it as science. And really the two are very similar. It's just when the rigidity of science is removed, it looks very similar to metaphysics. And the things that the metaphysicists are understanding and discovering are now finally being uh, backed up by science. So when I started doing body talk, it really spoke to me because it was it was rooted and grounded in science, but at the same time had that metaphysical side to it. So that's really when these guides started coming in, and I would be doing sessions, and I would see this enormous guide, Marty, I call her. She's a mantis. She's an amazing healer and very mother-like. And she reminds me of... Mary Magdalene or Kuan Yin. She has the same type of ascended master energy. And um, she would come in and basically give me the whole download of what was going on with the client on the table. And, of course, at first I was a little incredulous, and I would then ask the person is on with the client on the table. And, of course, at first I was a little incredulous, and I would then ask the person, is this what's going on with you? And 
just more and more I kept getting positive affirmation that the information I was getting was accurate. And so um, I just learned to trust it and to go with it. And um, the other guys came in after I had been working with uh, Mari for a while. And they came in because I had had an interest in um, different extra dimensional beings. Um, and it was, for example, here's kind of a funny story. I was alone in my family room. I was putting ornaments on my Christmas tree. I was in a super relaxed sort of meditative state with the little soft lighting. I just had the Christmas tree lights on. I was hanging ornaments. And then, boom, I just had to sit down on the ground, and that's the first time the divinians came in. And they just gave me this whole download about the brain and how it functions and connection and our ability to feel ourselves as these beautiful energetic beings having this physical experience and the connection into um, neuroplasticity and how we can continue to um, increase our longevity on this planet through um, expanding our brains and the way they work and the things that they do and the capacities um, and that that is an ever-evolving, ever-expanding um, part of our body. And it, that was really interesting. I mean, it just came in so randomly. <laughs> and then and then I kind of went away for a couple of months, and I thought back to that, you know, later. So I kind of forgot about it, and that came in again. I thought, wait a minute, that's right. I was having <laughs> ornaments, and that came in. So these things come in randomly when you're open, when you're relaxed, right? And um, and that's kind of how that went. So it was interesting. Yeah, and and the wonderful thing about your work, and uh, like this has my, my, been my study also because the relaxed state. And the wonderful thing about your work, and uh, like this has my, my, been my study also because the relaxed state and the way the brain functions and having the DNA and everything, let's say at its optimal, helps us to create in a way that we may have lost sight of that we're mm-hmm. able to actually function. In symphony, I mean, you know, you, you talk about symphony, but that's really the whole thing is like these things and when they're working all together right, most people have lost sight of the fact that mm-hmm. there's a way that we actually function because we haven't been functioning that way for whatever reason. We're just not, mm-hmm. you know, in that place where we've lost that, you know, it's like the fall kind of concept. But anyway, um, there's this massive way of being and creating and living and experiencing and loving and we're so unplugged from it so your work just kind of plugs us back in i i just want to ask about your one more question about the guide so what do you feel um some of the main feel um some of the main things you the guides that you're working with have to teach us Mm, that's that's a good question um so certainly uh I feel that all of the guidance that comes in is linked in many ways, and I'm the common denominator uh, of that because um, I will make one comment about guides in that when probably many of your callers um, and listeners have different guidance that they receive or they've practiced channeling before perhaps or some rendition of that. And I truly believe that the information that is accessible to me and to them um, is very personalized in that it relates to something that you have an affinity for. So, for example, I have an affinity towards the Divinians, towards the Arcturians and the Mantis, because I have um, a resonance with their energy. And so there is this resonant field. They've always been very interested in DNA and cellular communication and genomics um, in my career. That was something that was always um, really prominent for me, and I really understand now where the information came from. So these guys that I work with, they have um, this message to humanity about the way in which we come into physical form, understanding that, understanding that we are these energetic beings, and that as energetic beings, we come with a purpose, and that purpose is myriad. It is not just one purpose that is focused on you. It is the purpose in connection to the collective purpose, meaning all of humanity and universal purpose. It is your purpose as a connection to the earth and what the earth is going through. So these guys talked a lot to me about that, about um, how our own purpose connects into greater going through. So these guys talked a lot to me about that, about um, how our own purpose connects into greater collective purposes. 
as well as how we can uh, really embed ourselves, experience this plane of reality in a way that helps us to fulfill our purpose, but also to enjoy it while we're here. Um, the mantis bring many messages of joy and of peace and of well-being because they know that there are literally codes in our DNA that are um, specifically there to experience joy, to help us experience that in our lives. We didn't come here to suffer. We came here, yes, to learn and to grow and to evolve and also to help the earth evolve and to co-evolve with her. But we didn't come to hate our lives while we did that. No, we, we came here to experience this rich, to experience this rich, amazing environment that we live in. This earth that we live on, this whole web of life, all of the creatures here, we're a part of that. We're part of all the microbes that are here and have caretaken this earth for all the millions of years. So um, really bring this message about how we're part of the intricate system, how we came here to experience it, to be a part of it, to help in the evolution of it, to participate fully, to allow uh, whatever energetic density it is that we carry with us at the soul level to flow through us and to be ameliorated because we're on this time of the planet right now that's very special and very uh, inviting to do that, I would say. Um, so it, it's really about all of that. It's, it's about us and it's about the collective and, and how it's all happening simultaneously. You know, there are a few things that you talked about aspect of this. And, you know, of course it goes into like Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief and, you know, the great mm-hmm. Graydon work who's done so much work in this field. Can you mm-hmm. just jump in and talk about, what is going on on the planet right now, and then how does the epigenetics factor in everybody? We were kind of talking about this before the call, and I was like, no, we need to tell everybody this now because people <laughs> want to know, you know, like what is going on with the earth right now, and how do we handle all of these, what could be perceived as tumultuous times? It feels that way. But mm-hmm. um, you, what you were talking about was a kind of a, a, that there's a purpose to all of this, an end in sight, if you will, of, the experience of the tumultuousness. And I, can you explain to everybody what you and I were talking about, please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, as many of us noticed, the winter, but especially the spring, was an incredibly uh, intense energy. So um, as many of us noticed, the winter, but especially the spring, was an incredibly uh, intense energetic time. You may have uh, experienced anything from relationships breaking up to uh, if your parent issues with your kids, um, losing a job, getting a new job, um, a lot of upheaval, a lot of change, a lot of shifting out of things that weren't working for us. Maybe we didn't even realize we weren't ready to let go of yet, but it became non-optional. And that's what spring was all about. It was all, I called it the Roto-Rooter season because it was just about, you know, like purging the energy field, about really um, rapidly allowing us to move through things that were really dense or stuck in our field. Um, and again, I'll, I'll say it was, it was, it felt non-optional to me. I think for anyone doing the work who had sort of stepped on the bus and, um, you know, started the, you know, started this journey of awakening and evolving and unfoldment, um, it was probably more pronounced for you than others because you had already opened that invitation to um, evolve and change and open yourself up. So what that meant was that spring had a lot of um, intense energies for us, but the good news is that it does look like it's going to slow down a bit. Um, I'd say even even now uh, the energy is still pretty intense, but it, it feels like it's starting to slow grind almost to a halt so that July is really um, going to be the rest, restore, and rejuvenate month. It's really going to be a time for inward focus, for slowing down, for connecting uh, to nature, for eating healthy foods, for fortifying the body, for taking care of a lot about um, tips for relaxation and connection to the earth and growing your own food uh, is one great one. Fortifying your microbiome, 
through um, eating lots of healthy fruits and vegetables that are organically grown or gotten from the farmer's market, um, spending time outside in nature, um, getting exercise. All of these things are really important during this time when um, we have this reprieve of energy because um, as we move into the end of the summer and towards the fall, probably late August, early September, the energies feel like they're going to pick back up again, but in a much different way, and not so much in the roto-rooter way, but in this more accelerative way. And how this all relates to Earth is that the Earth herself is clearing massive amounts of density from her field, and as she does that, because we're part of her, we also density from her field, and as she does that, because we're part of her, we also get the same feeling and the same experiences to purge density from our field. And purging density means, in the practical sense, that if you've got a stuck emotional situation or you've been hanging on to emotions since you were a child, something happened to you that you sort of stuffed down and didn't allow yourself to feel and to process, well, that's the kind of stuff that you'll then have an experience that mirrors that original experience in the present that wants to be released. And so your body, your soul is trying to push you to release that through uh, repetition of that type of experience so that you will get the message and neutralize it and get with it and understand it better, allow it to move through your system. So the earth provides a wonderful reservoir and a wonderful way of dropping density and allowing it body, um, and to release. And as I was saying before, because she's going through her own release, when you release together, it just amplifies the whole experience. Um, and so, like I said, moving into July, we're relaxing. And then probably by the end of summer, we're sort of picking back up again, but in a more accelerative way, meaning um, you'll be busy. You'll have lots to do, but it will be in more relation to you bringing things into the world that you've wanted to bring into the world, more in relation to um, things that you have wanted to happen will start to happen. Um, you'll be busy. You'll have lots of work. You'll have lots of activity. You, if you've got kids, they'll have super busy schedules. Like everything's just going to get super busy again. Um, and so cherish this time of sweet respite over the summer and really take full advantage of it. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen um, that the guides have brought in, and the thing that's going to happen um, that the guides have brought in in the fall and winter months is that we're going to have a pretty um, intense flu season, and that's something the mantis have brought in to my attention. And so I'm actually creating um, an immune boosting set of tones right now because they've um, let me know that that's important right now for all of us. But there's lots of things you can do for yourself um, during these summer months to boost your immune system. And um, a lot of those I have listed on my website so people can find those out. But I mean, a lot of them you know as common sense, I'm sure, as well. And um, you really want to turn to herbal and earth remedies to heal yourself. We're moving out of that phase where pharmaceuticals are as effective or feel as congruent with what's going on with the energy right now. We're really moving into this really um, heightened period of earth healing and uh, earth remedies congruent with what's going on with the energy right now. We're really moving into this really um, heightened period of earth healing and uh, earth remedies. So anything that's from the earth, whether it be microbial or herbal, you know, plant-based, uh, food-based, those are the kinds of things that are going to work the best in the body from my perspective. And, you know, I want to ask you this. Is it uh, is it because of the nature of the vibration and frequency? I mean, I think in a perfect world we could live in a way in cities together that felt resonant also. But I was just out in the country today, and I'm sitting underneath trees. I'm in a really big city. And mm-hmm. when I'm there, I'm like, there is a lot of things that are going on in the country, I don't feel the frequency interference. I feel like the trees are alive and they are literally healing me. And so whatever that is of being with the earth, I mean, I know you would know. What is that? You you spoke about the earth energy that you're feeling and that's been amplified. So part of that amplification was that invitation for us to all release the 
density in our field because the earth is changing, the earth is evolving. And as she evolves and ascends, um, the energy shifts on the planet. Um, the, there's also other things going on. People talk about the poles reversing right now. We're going through this process of pole reversal. So that lends itself to some of the chaotic feeling of energy. Um, then there's just everything that's going on um, with a lot of humans that are together and a lot of the emotions that they're emitting and the electromagnetic fields around them because we all emit a really uh, strong and far electromagnetic field around us. And depending upon where your emotions and your mind and thoughts are, that electromagnetic field has a different texture to it, right? I'm sure you can understand this as a new that electromagnetic field has a different texture to it, right? I'm sure you can understand this as a musician is that you know that different frequencies have different yeah. texture and they feel different in the body. Right. So that's part of what the earth is going through right now, you know, as she's evolving and she's releasing and purging density, we're feeling it because we're part of her. We're, every element in your body came from the earth. Um, you are 60% microbial and you're 40% human. All of those microbes come evolved with humanity they also have been on the planet for millions of years, and so we're sort of the newcomer, but we're their child. Basically, you can think of us as a walking, talking microbe because, you know, originally they were on the outside of us and then folded in and we became, you know, we've got this lovely bag of skin now that everything's on the inside. Um, but it's true that they've been a part of us and we wouldn't be here without them. And they're really Earth's right-hand uh, helpers, so the end of us, and we wouldn't be here without them. And they're really Earth's right hand uh, helpers. So the energy with them is your energy. It's reflective in each other. So whatever's going on with your microbiome, whatever's going on with you, you're constantly in the interplay, and then also with the Earth, and then also with the other humans around you. So it's not really a simple answer about what is happening with the energy, but it is very interesting, and it is um, dependent upon what's happening with the planet and then what's happening with the collective. Yeah, and, and the, the picture that you're presenting is the frequency and sound healing, you know, because I love your scientific background. I love that you know the science of this because it is so important. And then you also bring in deep, deep, intense spiritual uh, balancing with it so that it becomes just like the nature of what it is because a lot of times people just like to hear the science of it and so and I'm going to ask one more question and then I, I may intersperse with people as they're also talking if I want to ask something else but <laughs> I'm going to ask one more question if anybody has any questions to ask for Jailene one-on-one and you can talk with her and have a little bit of, have some time with her also so can we talk about you know you talked about how the body was once one way and how these highlight divine beings are Almost to me, it's like trying to help us remember the truth of what we are so that we can, you know, uh, live that, awaken to it, be that. What does the brain have to do with it? And, you know, are we talking about brain upgrades? Because I think that there's been a lot of stuff that people don't understand about the brain. Uh, and again, we were talking about neuroplasticity before and how important it is. People don't understand this stuff, Jalene. So can you talk about it? Because it's so key. Like, why do we have to deal with the brain and how it works and upgrades from that? We, no one's talking yeah, about brain absolutely. upgrades. No one. Yeah, well. The brain and how it works and upgrades from that. We, no one's talking yeah, about brain absolutely. upgrades. No one. Yeah, well, it, you're right. It is so important. And uh, the divinians have taught me a lot about how, just how important it is and just how malleable our brains are. Um, I have not studied uh, neuroscience <laughs> in no way. So, you know, all the information that comes in is, is through guidance. Um, but here's what they told me. They've told me that, um, so the body is one um, giant receptor um, through the dermis, through the fascia. We are constantly picking up on electromagnetic signals all around us. It's not just through the brain, it's not just through the five senses. You're literally absorbing information electromagnetically constantly depending upon your environment. That information then uh, flows in, bring information in. And so all of this input is coming into the brain via these electrical signals and then making its way to the interior of the brain. And when it gets to certain parts of the brain, say like the thalamus, 
it then gets assigned, that input gets assigned a value or a meaning because the brain loves to categorize things. It's like a supercomputer, right? And it loves to categorize things based on prior experience. So let's say, for example, when you were a child, you went to the beach and you got rolled over by a big wave and now you're scared of the wave, you're scared of being held under, you're scared of being at the beach. Um, your brain has all that catalog. The only reason you're still scared, it's not like you went to the beach and then you forgot. Your brain cataloged that experience because it's trying to keep you alive, right? But it's also watching and recording everything that happens. It's like it's got a video recorder. And it's um, especially when we have a stressful experience or play some neural tracks down about that because we want to remember that. We want to avoid that in the future or we want to make sure we do that again. Did that feel good? Yeah, let's do that again. So it's really simple and yet quite intricate the way the brain um, is cataloging and maintaining this database of information. So, again, the input come in, then the brain recognizes it as having a certain texture and a feel and a certain kind of electrical impulse, and then it categorizes it, and it moves it through different parts of the brain using these different gating channels. So it moves it through the brain, and depending on what kind of response it had the first time it came in or if it's a brand new one and your body is associating it with something else, uh, an emotion is going to get connected to it. Um, it's going to elicit either, let's say, an attraction towards or diversion or aversion from, um, and so you're going to get connected to it. Um, it's going to elicit either, let's say, an attraction towards or diversion or aversion from, um, and so you're either going to want to um, do more of it or never have that happen again. And that is where then the brain is going to connect it into perhaps the stress response or into the pleasure response. And uh, depending on which way it goes, then you get a whole cascade of other effects, right? You get, a, you get the whole cascade of your hormones getting involved, your neurotransmitters getting involved. It's a stress response. You get the whole hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access, right? We get all the signals to increase cortisol. Cortisol is like, you know, there's a tiger coming, there's fear, there's something to run from. Get up and go. It, you know, it raises your heart rate. Uh, as does adrenaline and noradrenaline, and those also come out of the brain stem and uh, other parts of the brain. And so um, depending on how that experience is, and so um, depending on how that experience is interpreted by your brain, you are going to respond in a different way, and it's been this whole cascade of other um, responses are going to start happening. So there's always this biochemical uh, response to the emotional activity in the body and then there's the emotional activity and how that energetically affects us so all of these things are happening and the way that we break that cycle and the way that we start to increase neuroplasticity and start to play in the field because we could just say oh okay well those are my learned responses i'm stuck with that but nothing could be further from the truth you're not stuck with anything you are a dynamic incredible symphony of light and sound and you can be anything you want to be you can respond however you want and you can create new neural tracts of response and new neural plasticity meaning new um new form and keenly observing the responses that the body and the brain is having to what's occurring around us. As you keenly observe, becoming a conscious observer, or you could even call yourself a quantum observer, because really what you're doing by quantumly observing it, all oh, that's a fancy word for saying you're going to pay close attention to what is happening around you and how your body's responding. As you step into that very careful response and observation of that response, then you can start to stop yourself and say, wait a minute, because you're observing yourself almost from outside of yourself. You create some space between what's happening to you and the observation of it, and you're able to say, wait a minute, I don't want to have that same stress or fear response every time I'm at the beach. So instead, I'm going to understand what was so scary and I'm I'm at the beach. So instead, I'm going to understand what was so scary about that experience. Well, it was scary because not only did I feel like 
I couldn't breathe, but I felt like everything I knew and loved was going to be taken away from me. I felt out of control. I felt like I didn't have control over my environment. Control is always a big one for people. I felt like uh, I didn't know where I was. I was confused, and the brain doesn't like to be confused, and neither does the body. So you start understanding how that felt as a child. And maybe when you got out of the water, you were crying and you were scared. And maybe one of your parents said, oh, you're fine. Don't cry. Don't, you're fine. Don't cry. You're fine. Don't cry. Come on. We're having a great day at the beach. Stop crying. Stop whining. And so you sucked it in. You sucked it up. And you didn't really process it in that moment. But what really happened was you were tapping into that fear that so many humans have of annihilation, of death, of losing everything we know and love and of being abandoned and being afraid and being alone, sort of being in that black hole. And that's a real fear that a lot, uh, most of humanity has because it's a, it's a large, large uh, collective um, imprint that we all are working towards releasing. And because there's been so many wars, so much genocide, so much tumultuous, um, so much horrible treatment of humans to humans and of other races to other races. You name it, whether it's here or whether it's off planet, it's happening through millennia. So that's a big thing that's getting purged. And so it really gets um, activated in many of our experiences. So again, bringing us back to where we were, when you consciously observe and when you allow yourself to process the emotions and really give yourself permission to really be scared and say, God, that was, that was such a scary thing that happened to me. That happened to me. I was really scared and I didn't feel like anyone stepped up and gave me the hug I needed or maybe feel better or took care of me in the way in that moment because I wasn't just processing getting rolled by a wave. I was processing the annihilation of a species. You know, you really, that these things link into bigger stuff. And when you allow yourself to process that and to feel at the depths of your being that fear of being in that place again and you connect in to the earth and we'll do this today when we do the process I'll connect everybody to the earth but when you send roots down into the earth and ask the earth to help you to process those emotions and process that fear you don't have to do it yourself it's not about heavy lifting it's about experiencing it's about allowing and it's about letting it go and that neutralizes those feelings and elicits a new response. It gives you the opportunity to create a new experience for yourself. And that neutralizes those feelings and elicits a new response. It gives you the opportunity to create a new experience for yourself. And now you've just changed your neural connections. Now you've just changed those pathways that were hardwired. And the next time you go to the beach, you can start to get yourself comfortable again with that environment and realize that it was bigger than you may have originally thought. So that's, that's part of the process that I teach is, is about being this keen observer and about allowing things to roll through you. And once they do, knowing that that is going to generate a lot more neuroplasticity than if you just stayed stuck in that place that you've always been in. And it's a long process in a way, um, one might think, but the more and more you do it, the quicker it begins to go for you, the faster it starts happening. It starts to become an automatic. It's like a muscle. So that's oh. And you talk about the micro to the macro and how we're not just processing for ourselves, how it's this right. planet, how it's off planet, how it's multidimensional lifetimes, and how, you know, we're not alone in this, but one of the key things is a bit, an understanding of this will help people to have a much richer and more fuller life because by by being able to put these things back in balance, and this is me talking, everybody, from what I understand, these basic things, we're so out of balance that we don't even know it. I mean, and when we put these things yeah. back into balance, most of us, then things change. I have so much I want to still say, but people have their hands raised. So I'm going to take a call. Is that okay, Jolene? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, okay. We're Beverly Hills, California, 0710710. Welcome to the call. Oh, thank you. Uh, I barely made it. I kind of, I, you know, fell asleep a little bit. As the process didn't even start. As the process, the process didn't even start. As the process didn't even start yet. But I think my body might have processed the information. So, um, anyway, this is Eve, and I just wanted hey, to Eve. find it. 
um, what if my brain, like there is some heat going on in my body sometimes. Okay. And I'm just wondering if you can see anything that's going on in the brain that's kind of uh, just raising the temperature a bit where it feels a little bit not the same, just uncomfortable, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So you're saying you're experiencing heat at different times in your body? Uh, maybe when I think about something that's stressful. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, of course, the stress response when it increases our heart rate and it gives us that feeling of heat, almost like the blood rising um, in the body, and I, I kind of feel a feeling of heat, almost like the blood rising um, in the body, and I, I kind of feeling that with you. It's like it almost feels like the blood starts to rise. It's almost like your ears get warm. Um, and what's happening is that your your blood is moving. It's almost like your tissues are all responding um, to that fear response and your um, the vasodilation of the different blood vessels um, is shifting and changing and um, it's creating that heat. There's there's molecules molecules that are on the move. There are tissues expanding and contracting. And that all creates that activity. It's almost like if you were um, running or sweating, right? Because yes. your body is telling you, um, get up and go, uh, this isn't safe. And so that stress is getting converted into all those physical responses, even if you're just sitting sitting down uh, at your desk or something. So true. So, That's absolutely true. Yeah. So, you know, the... What are the? We're going to do the process. I was actually glad to hear that you uh, relaxed and fell asleep because a lot of the work I do is to help calm down the nervous system. And as you calm down the nervous system, that's really the first thing you need to do in order to do the rest of the work, right? Because if our nervous system is running amok, then it's really hard to even relax and begin to do some of the work or some of the exploration of our environment and what causes us stress versus not. When you're just feeling stress a majority of the time, we need to get ourselves calm first so we can start to step back and create some space between our reactions and what's happening with us and our and our consciousness, right? Um, so that Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I really recommend – I actually – as well, jaylentracy.com, and you can download those, and they're really good at calming your nervous system down. The other thing that I really like to do is to teach people to use toning themselves. Um, you can listen to my tones, or you can also connect into the earth and just use sound and vibration yourself by making different vowel sounds, different tones. Um, really, there's no right or wrong way to do it. And the important thing, though, is that you're moving energy through your body, you're creating vibrations in your body, and these are all really helpful. Again, they don't have to sound in any particular way. It, you don't have to think that you sound pretty or beautiful. It's, you don't have to be a songbird. Um, honestly, the most important thing is that you're moving energy through your body, and when you're in stress, What's not happening is the energy is not moving. It's just kind of like vibrating and agitated. And you start moving it and you're allowing it someplace to go, and you'll start to come back into more of the homeostatic uh, feeling in your body where you don't feel so spots of hot throughout your body. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're saying that I should, at that time, if I experience anything like that, I should just get up and move around or just start toning, and that would make it dissipate a little? For sure. Yeah, if you're... Um, if you're in a space where you're free to tone, like while you're not at work or something, I <laughs> know right, right. start toning in the middle of the office. But um, let's say you're in your car. I actually do this a lot in my car. If I'm a little stressed out, um, I will, in my car, actually tone. And sometimes if I'm having a rough moment then or a rough day, uh, the tones come out and they don't, you know, they're very jagged, they sound kind of ugly, they, they're loud. Um, those are the best ones, though, for moving energy. Just let it out. You let it go. And, yeah, you just make to uh, re-engage you back into the re relaxation mode, of course, is breathing. And I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, in through the nose and out through the mouth and doing repeated cycles of breath. And then secondarily, I always tell people to send roots down into the earth. 
Don't try and do all the heavy lifting yourself. Engage Earth's energy to help you move fear out of the body. Ask her to help you to absorb it. She's like a magnet. She draws this energy from us. She's just pleased for you to connect into her. And so every time you connect into the Earth, whether she's in service or whether you're in service to her is is good for her. It's that engagement that she wants. She wants that engagement with humanity. So um, as you do that, that'll help to balance your energy field. And then if you start toning, so breathe, connect, and tone. When you do those three things, it really shifts your whole energy field and your stress response starts to calm down. And tone. When you do those three things, it really shifts your whole energy field and your stress response starts to calm down. Okay. Yeah, wow, try that's it. a lot of it information. Works. I absolutely will. <laughs> Thank you so much, it is. Danielle. Thank- oh, yeah. wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Eve. you. Nice to meet you. Okay, everybody, wow. let us know how you're feeling. We're going to take a question from the web call. Again, let us know what you're feeling in this moment. Um, I think this is one that's so important now because, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Jarlene, because it seems like so many people, like I work with, you know, families also, and it's like so many people are having anxiety now. So Amy asks, I have experienced so much stress and anxiety lately, and I notice the more stressed I get, the more sadness and memory issues I have, and I'm only 25. Do you have any Mm -hmm. ideas to help me restore my mind and brain so that I can, like, reset Thanks so much, so that I can, like, reset. Thanks so much, Amy. Yeah, hi, Amy. Uh, That's very true that a lot of us are dealing with those kinds of feelings of overwhelm right now because there's so much chaos on the planet, and if we tap into that, um, then it can really create even more emotional overwhelm when we've even just got it within our own sphere of family and life and uh, friends and whatnot. So um, what I would suggest is many of the same things, the process that I suggested to Eve and that you do the process of breathing and then connecting to earth and then toning. Um, But the other thing I would say for you uh, in particular, Amy, is that you limit the amount of time that you're spending um, either on social media or connected to the news cycle or to listening to other people because it feels like you're getting an inordinate amount of sort of chaotic vibration around you just from advice from other people, a lot of people giving you input about what to do with your life, about where to go, what you should be doing. And um, it's creating too much, um, I would say, disruption in your field. You need, especially when I talked about July being rest and restore month, you need to really to sort of take a step or two back and really start to understand what is true for you. What's your truth? What resonates for you? And this is especially true for um, for the young people right now because um, you guys all grew up in this era, and, and I'm one of them. I've got three kids, um, where we really were super hands-on with our kids. And um, because of that, um, there has been some uh, sort of, uh, you could say, loss of responsibility on our kids' parts, or there's just been a new way of operating. There's new expectations. And then there's also sort of a um, on a silver platter for so long. And so really going through the process of understanding what works for you, what feels good to you, you'll know what your truth is. No one can tell you what your truth is, you need to find your truth within yourself. And that means that you open up to your intuition. You start to listen to yourself. What feels good in your body when you do it? What feels safe? What feels um, like it nurtures you? What feels like it opens you and expands you? Um, What brings you joy? Those are the things in your life you want to connect with right now. And the things that bring you great stress or fear, you want to start to um, diminish as much as you can. Now, if it's a work-related situation, obviously we need to work to pay our rent and to survive. But is there someone at work who's stressing perhaps mm, not spend as much time with? Or how could you restructure things in your life? Do you need to change where you're living? Do you need to... um, start to hang out with different friends. All those things can be um, understood. And who makes you feel good? 
what speaks to your truth and do what speaks to your truth. And in that process, you will start to come into a place of more peace and well-being because your truth is truly what you want to be connecting and resonating with. Wow. Thank you so much, Amy, for asking that. I got so much from that myself. It's going in so many different <laughs> directions. And the thing about it, I, we were talking about this before the call. Whenever anyone um, ever asks a question, the energy is going out and it's helping everyone. So thank you when you ask mm-hmm. the question, everybody, because it helps everyone. And I, of not knowing how important your truth is. Like, this mm-hmm. is, like, the key thing, your truth. It's what we all came to do, but we've been, like like you said, kind of, uh, you know, clipped. Like, the wings are, like, it's not respected. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not, and, and it's, like, again, back to the city thing. Like, I'm very, very grateful for where I am, but the more and more I notice my city has grown tremendously. Like, it, it was a very small place, but the more it gets busier and busier, the more things are going. I, I can't go down the street without seeing people looking like they're glued to their phones. So it's like, who am I and what am I being? And so this concept of your truth and that it comes out of you as opposed to being uh, all over the place, getting caught up, our energy caught up in these places, it's just really, really key. Um, So anyway, can you talk a little bit about that, the truth, so people can understand how important this is? And then we're just going to go, Janine's going to take us through a process. But so anyway, can you talk a little bit about that, the truth, so people can understand how important this is? And then we're just going to go, Janine's going to take us through a process. But, Janine, I mean, this is really, really important. People don't know how important their truth is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is really um, what we all came here to experience. So we, we came here to experience physicality, and we came here to experience um, duality, right, the difference between being this energetic being and yet being physical at the same time. So those are sort of – on opposite ends of the spectrum, right? We're this amazing soul energy. You've got your oversoul and you've got this physical experience, which feels uh, much more, say, uh, limited or stunted. And, and in actuality, it is not. In actuality, you are all of that. You are your whole oversoul being that is flowing into you to manifest you in the physical. And so when we start to remember that and connect into the actuality, then it's a little easier to start to understand, ah, I am this amazing energetic being. I'm here to experience experience this beautiful amazing landscape i came to understand this place i came to understand myself my soul family the collective the earth i came here to be in support many of us came here to be in service so when we're living outside of those parameters where we're negating different parts of ourself or our truth which really is you know all about you being this beautiful magnificent energetic being Uh, having this amazing experience here, when we're outside of that or dampening that down or shutting it off through all these different channels that separate us from that truth, from being this sentient being here uh, on this planet, an intricate part of this whole web of life. When we cut ourselves off, intricate part of this whole web of life, when we cut ourselves off from those truths, those basic things about being here, then we start to feel really out of whack. And our nervous system isn't designed to live outside of that truth. Your nervous system is designed to be a red flag when needed. It's not designed to listen to all of the horns and the beeping and the, all the stuff from the city, right? Um, or right, all of right. the stuff. It's, it's designed more to listen to the songs of the birds. It's designed to listen to um, the insects and the animals and the other beings. Now, this is not to say that one cannot live in a city, but you need to understand that, yes, I live in a city, but then I go home and maybe I listen to nature sounds or I live in a city uh, out of necessity, but then I take trips on the weekend. You know, I take the train up north if you're, let's say you're in Manhattan or something, uh, out of necessity, but then I take trips on the weekend. You know, I take the train up north if you're, let's say you're in Manhattan or something, I take the train up north for an hour and I get out and I walk in the cloisters or I get out and I walk um, in the park wherever I can. I sit in a trip to the park every day and I 
connect with the grass. And I do what I can to remember that I came here to experience the earth and to be a part of this system. I didn't come here to cut myself off from it and to be a technological being that doesn't care about the earth and that generates trash and just doesn't care about where it goes. I didn't come to be that. I came to be a part of this and to nurture and care for myself, to nurture and care for my loved ones and for the earth as well. And so that's the, those are the kinds of things that really speak to our truth and speak to what it means to be a human and to be this connected human, connected to reflections and the voice of your truth. And living your life in alignment with those answers will bring in so much more peace and well-being for you. Um, that That is what, what so many people um, will benefit from understanding. Yeah, that's really, really key. And I love how you said that. I just want to, like, soak that in. Um, mm-hmm. There's this world that we're living through and in, but it's not. You know, we've been part parcel of the co-creation of it, but it's not what's nurturing us. And in any moment, we can step away and move into what nurtures us. We don't have to think we have to wait or it's over there or down the road. We can find it here and now. And right. uh, you know what? We're at the top of the hour, everyone. And so Janine is going to take us through the process. We're going to look at her incredible spectral offer. And if anyone has it pulled up on their screen, I've got mine pulled up. Dylene, are you ready? What would you like to do first? I want to look at this offer. Dylene, are you ready? What would you like to do first? I want to look at this offer first, but I'm, I'm following you. Uh, sure, yeah. Why don't we chat about that a bit, and then I can take everyone through the process because I'll do some tones and a live transmission for everyone, and I'll just – chill everyone out and then you can just float off and (laughs) have a nice relaxing evening after that so yeah i'm excited i'm just kidding i'm so excited (laughs) okay i'm you know and everybody i mean the group loves uh processes and the transmissions which is why it's nice to talk about the package first everybody because once we are in the middle of the actual process a lot of times we just want to relax so (laughs) i'm gonna pull my page up and for anybody who wants to know it's www.awakeningheartnetwork.com forward slash jylene 8 that's j-e-i-l-e-n-e-8 www.awakeningheartnetwork.com for a-e-i-l-e-n-e-8 www.awakeningheartnetwork.com forward slash jylene 8 or you can just go to jylene's special event page and then click on the special offer and you can have it right there with you and i have the special offer pulled up right now um, Jylene has made so generous to us two different packages in her special offer. So, Jylene, I will hand this over to you. This is this is I love this part, you know. So please, this is such a gift for all of us. Okay, thanks. So I um, put this package together with um, giving everyone an opportunity to experience my work, both from the tone side, um, because I do create sets of tones and meditations um, that you can listen to at any time. And then also to experience uh, the class that I've put together um, as a way of taking this journey through learning how to really become that conscious observer of your whole participating in it, to understand your body from the inside and out, working with your microbiome to initiate and bring in more health and vitality Your microbiome has everything to do with how well your immune system works, how well your neurotransmitters are functioning, your hormonal response. So uh, it's a really important facet of your health. And so um, we talk about that. Um, In week one, we talk about the way that the energy flows through your oversoul and into your physical being, that whole symphony we talk about, and how you can consciously observe your life. And then we move into the second week talking about that heart-brain-gut connection and how to work with that and how to support your microbiome, um, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, And then in the third week, we discuss uh, brain dynamics uh, with the Divinians. And I talk a bit more about who the Divinians are and how we can continue to expand um, and connect. Uh, with the Divinians. And I talk a bit more about who the Divinians are and how we can continue to expand um, and create more neuroplasticity in the brain for longevity and health. And um, and then the final week, we um, work with the Mantis on teaching you some toning for yourself 
and how we can work with the energies of the earth and um, shift our epigenetics and our DNA and a bit more about that. Um, and each week um, includes um, some written materials and some live webcasts. And it um, also includes other supporting materials, and there's a transmission in each webcast. So you get live tones um, through that. These have been recorded. And um, then at the end, I do a live question and answer, which you can connect in through Zoom, and we'll all be together, and we'll have a live chat. You can ask your question material of the class and to ask any questions and to um, find out how to continue the work and um, keep expanding and opening and connecting to bring about more peace and well-being in their lives. Um, and then um, I finally also have an invitation to connect with my online community. It's called the Light Vibes uh, Network Community and or the Light Vibes Learning Community. And this is a community where um, the class is housed and also where I post um, new um, tone transmissions, new written channels material. Um, I have an Ask Jaylene section. I have um, a webcast every month that I do that um, enables us to connect to the material and connect to each other. And so there's a two-month uh, free membership to that site as well for participating in the class. Um, and there's lots and lots of helpful working with the different energies and what's going on um, real time, what's happening, you know, in the month of June, what's happening in the month of July, and um, whatever it is that's coming in, I post information about that. So that's there. And then um, in package B, everything that is in package A is available, plus a 30-minute session with me one-on-one, -on -one, which um, really brings in more personalized um, healing for you and allows me to work on specific issues that you may have. So the guides will scan your body and look through everything from your energy field down to the nitty-gritty epigenetics, the function of your DNA. Um, so if you've been dealing with a health problem or something else, it can be emotional, spiritual, or it can be um, biochemical. Whatever it is that you've been dealing with, they will um, look through your body and identify the root causes of it and use the tones to shift those elements in the DNA. And so, yeah, that's they will um, look through your body and identify the root causes of it and use the tones to shift those elements in the DNA. And so, yeah, that's the, the two different packages available. And um, I've just really enjoyed um, putting the class together and having the opportunity to work with people one-on-one uh, -on -one as well. It's been a really wonderful opportunity. And I, I just want to say to everybody that you can look at Dylene's incredible, incredible testimonials, and you can understand the nature of how when we're able to balance the sound and the frequency that we are, the light codes, the DNA, it we become like the fullness of our potential. You know, we become the fullness of who we came to be. And as Darlene, you know, mentioned earlier, this whole idea of, you know, being able to live your truth. When our whole frequency and body is DNA and everything is balanced, we are within the vehicle to live in the vehicle to live and be our truth. So this, again, what Eileen is doing is very near and dear to my heart because I know what this is and the potential of it. And if we can get into the space where we have all of these things in balance, and she's got these incredible highlight guides who are coming in and who are also a part of, you know, the work that she's doing. And so, again, www.awakeningheartnetwork.com forward slash Jylene 8. Or you can just go to the special offer page and you can go in there right now and just click on it and you can have it right now. So I, I very, very, this is such important stuff and it's the cutting edge of what, we're beginning to understand is important in terms of accessing our full potential and being in the awakened state as like high highlight divine beings. So anyway, this is amazing. Thank you, Jaleen, for making this available for all of us. I'm so grateful to you. And yeah, absolutely. Thank you. At this point we are um, at or after the top of the hour. So if we're ready, we can all, Get ready for a sample of your work, your process, so people can understand how this is the core of the package, the, the, the work that you're doing, and they can have a taste of it so they can know how to experience it. Yeah, great. 
Okay, so if everybody would like to get into a comfortable place, you can be seated or lying down, whatever works for you. And just go ahead and close your eyes and take some nice deep breaths in through the nose, all the way down to your belly, out through the mouth. Allowing anything that is ready to depart your body to exhale out with the breath. Feel yourself. Feel yourself connect with your tissues as you breathe. Feel yourself relax. Feel your cells come into alignment with this present moment. Feel your whole body come into alignment with this present moment. Allowing any stories or ideas or beliefs that are holding you back from this present moment to gently release, to let go. That you are here now in this moment. And as you breathe, start to imagine and visualize roots flowing downward from every point you begin flowing out into all directions and moving downward through the many layers of soil and sand, water, and layer upon layer of sediment flowing downward through the earth as if magnetically drawn further and further down, through caves, through rivers, eventually making it to the core of Earth's energy field. Not the hot molten core, but the core of her energy field, crystalline in structure, beautiful light. Your roots anchor into this beautiful light connecting with the earth and she feels that connection and welcomes you. You're connecting back to your ancestor connection and welcomes you. You're connecting back to your ancestor. Your original ancestor, that is the earth. All of the elements of her body are part of your body. The air that you breathe, the food that you eat, it all comes from her. The water that you drink. You're part of her and she's part of you. She responds by sending beautiful, healing, relaxing energy up through the roots. And as you breathe in, that energy flows up through those roots. It flows rapidly up those roots. And eventually, as it makes its way to your body, you may invite it in if you wish. Eventually, as it makes its way to your body, you may invite it in if you wish. And if you do, it begins flowing through your tissues flowing through your muscles, through every cell, bringing your whole system into harmony and balance with her energy. You flow with her energy. You're cradled in her embrace, safely nurtured by her. Now we begin with Tones from the earth, from the many guides that support her, that care deeply for the evolution of humankind and for earth herself, who bring you these tones to bring all of the systems of your body into balance, to bring your DNA back into alignment with harmonious origins. To bring your nervous system into a state of calm and peace. To allow your immune system to flourish and thrive. To understand what is a threat. 
and what is not. To allow all of the neurotransmitters of your body to support you for happiness and health and well-being. Take a nice deep breath.
Take a few nice deep breaths and allow that energy to flow through your body. Remember those roots that you sent into the earth and allow any Letting the energy flow through your system. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating tonight and for listening in. I really appreciate it. All of the guides appreciate it. And this work happens when you show up. Thank you. I want to thank you too, Jaleen. And everybody, we're in this most receptive state. And let's send Jaleen love from our hearts for being with us. We'll take a moment and we'll send her great gratitude and love from our hearts. It's a receptive state. And let's send Jaleen love from our hearts for being with us. We'll take a moment and we'll send her great gratitude and love from our hearts. Jaleen, thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. That was incredible. Mm, Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.